Hello there, my name is Kirk and this is the Fujifilm X100V. I've had it for around about two or so months now and I wanted to deep dive into 11 things I love about the camera as well as a couple things I'm not enjoying so much but overall it's such an amazing value of a camera that was released around about two or so years ago that represents still such an amazing steal and an awesome camera for 2022. So let's jump into the first thing and see what I love about the X100V and then some of the things I don't like as much. So firstly, the overall size and compact nature of the X100V is by far my absolute favorite thing about it. Being able to not worry about different lenses and hoods and adapters and all that type of stuff and just going out there to shoot is so great and the fact that it's in the form factor of a point and shoot camera makes it really inviting to take the camera wherever I go and I never hesitate to not bring it. Just because it's so subtle, it doesn't get in people's faces and I don't have to worry about bringing different lens kits and having it hang off my bag or, or wherever it might be off my shoulder. Um, it makes it really, really casual and that's one of the big things I love about it is that it always makes me want to go out, take photos no matter where I'm going and because of how small it is, people don't bat an eye about it. Next up, the film emulation modes and more specifically, being able to click one button on the back of the camera and essentially select through different mode selections that represent different type of film emulations. Now, I've gone on fujifilmxweekly.com and I've picked out a few of my favorite film emulation recipes on there and being able to bake those into the camera and quickly switch between them, which I don't think is exclusive to the X100V, but the fact that it's possible on such a small camera makes it such a delight to use. And whenever I wanna change my film style, I just hit the button on the back, swipe through, and boom, I've got my different film styles straight away from the camera. Number three is the optical and digital viewfinder. I absolutely love how you can either go traditional style and look through the viewfinder of the camera and it gives you just an exact see-through look. I think it's just an optical look you could call it. Or if you wanted to see what your video looks like or your photo looks like and but still have that old school camera feel, you can switch the OLED viewfinder which pops up straight away. And when you're looking through it, you can see all the camera settings or, more, or whatever would be on the LCD of the camera. And that's something I absolutely love and it is super responsive. I can change the settings if I want to, to when it actually activates. But mainly, whenever I put my eye up to the camera, I have it on OLED mode. But when I wanna go fully old school and not see what the picture looks like and go completely manual mode, I just put that down and also saves a bit of battery life as well. So overall, an awesome system and I think it's great and every photographer will love being able to use that traditional viewfinder mode. Number four, it's all about dials. From the aperture ring at the front of the camera to the exposure compensation on the right hand side on the top, as well as the shutter speed and the ISO dial, I have to say it is so satisfying to be able to quickly change settings wherever I am. Being able to lift up the ISO um, dial just like that and twist it around to change ISO is so satisfying. It actually took me a few weeks to figure out that that was a thing. But the tactile feel of the buttons and the dials is just so great. And also being able to change the aperture as well, just like this, it's just so satisfying. I just wanna, it's very nice. So now number five is the leaf shutter on the inside of the camera. Now I won't go too in depth of what that actually means. I'll leave a link in the description below about explaining what a leaf shutter is. But one of my favorite things about it is that you can go completely silent and not make any noise when taking pictures so you don't have to disturb anyone. Or how I like to go it, I can choose the different sounds I want the shutter to make as well and it makes it really cool when I'm snapping a photo. So there's different sounds that you can use to make the, uh, the shutter noise whenever you take a picture or you can go completely stealth mode which is also fantastic as well. My next favorite part about the X100V is the customizable Q menu. I currently have it set up to something really simple with a two by four grid of different quick options that I wanna change whenever I'm shooting from a self timer to film simulation mode, dynamic range and grain being on and off. I've got all these buttons on here that I can quickly click and change whenever I'm going and out and about and it's so easy rather than having to jump in and out of the menus and dig for different settings because 90% of the time when I am changing these settings, it's inside this Q menu and it's really easy to cut and change whenever I need to. Speaking of the Q menu and customizable buttons as well too, there's tons of buttons throughout the camera where I've customized and mapped to different things. For example, I've got the front button on the top of the camera just here for my ND filter. I've got the front button for different exposure controls and a few other things, including my favorite one, which is the back button on here and the back dial, which I click and then can change the different type of custom film settings, which makes it really easy to switch between modes on the camera. 
Next thing is a very small one, but it's customization. I love how you can put on this little red nipple here or whatever you want. You can put a thumb grip on the X100V as well and different lens hoods and filters, which really give it the film effect. But being able to personalize the X100V and make it your own, just like a lot of other cameras out there, but I think it's something really special and makes it the perfect little companion and the personalized little companion too. Now, ND filters. Not external ND filters, but built-in ND filters. I currently shoot most of my videos with a Blackmagic 6K Pro, and I was blown away by how a cinema camera under $3,000 can have a built-in ND filter. Well, I was even more shocked to find out that this camera here, this little tiny one, has a built-in ND filter. Now, call me naive, I guess, if lots of other cameras might have that, but the fact that I can easily record video and switch to my 180 degree shutter rule by having that extra stop of ND is awesome and I don't have to build uh, or bring another ND filter, I guess. It's really great and I think the fact that it has a little one-stop built-in ND filter is really fantastic and it even helps with photography too. If I don't wanna go down or drop my shutter speed or increase or change another one of the settings in ISO or something, I can easily just grab the ND filter which I've assigned to this button up the top here, easily switch it and then it just clicks into place. It's great. Speaking of video as well too, being able to shoot F-Log in this camera is amazing. I shoot all of my videos in either F-Log or S-Log or whatever type of camera I'm using in terms of Blackmagic, I shoot it in Blackmagic RAW. But having that almost RAW codec or a log profile makes it really easy to color grade and match with all my other footage as well. And the fact that it can also shoot in DCI too gives you that extra width of the frame as well. So having another compact camera that can shoot in F-Log or Fujifilm log, I guess you can call it, is a really big bonus and something that you don't see in too many small cameras like this. And if I touch this onto a gimbal, it could easily be a V camera for me and the quality of the footage is absolutely beautiful. Another big thing in terms of quality is being able to have the option to shoot in one of my custom film modes and shoot in JPEG only, as well as shooting in RAW, which preserves all the settings too. This is an absolute dream. I love being able to have the option of just shooting in JPEG or doing JPEG and RAW where the JPEG saves the custom film settings and I can just go in, use the JPEGs and delete all the RAWs if I think they're good enough. But there's always one or two outliers that I can jump in there and change the RAW settings for as well in Lightroom. Another thing I love about the camera is the built-in weather resistance. Although I haven't really been shooting too much with the filter on the top, if you do put a filter on the camera, it makes it really, really weather resistant. With and without, I've taken it in the pouring rain and in the sand dunes as well, and it is really awesome. I've been able to throw this everywhere and not really be too worried about it getting damaged in terms of water or dust. And although I don't recommend dunking it in any water, it is still an amazing option for being able to go out there and shoot no matter what the conditions are, especially shooting in those film emulation modes in the rain and getting that cyberpunk feel is really awesome and something that I love about it. It's really one of those reasons that combined with the small and compact nature of the camera makes it an absolute no-brainer to bring it no matter what circumstances or situation or conditions at least that you're going out to shoot in as well. It's kind of a no excuses camera, I guess you could call it. You always have to go out and shoot with it and rain, hail or shine, there's no excuses to why you wouldn't. So those are all the things I absolutely love about the X100V. Now going into a few minor things that I don't like about it and these aren't really necessarily big deal breakers but they may bother you I guess. Number one is the menus. The menus are deep and they're long and they're tiring to get through and even though I've had it for two months and really studied a lot of videos, I still can't find a few things that I want to look for when I'm in a rush and they're really annoying and being able to go through all the menus with this one click wheel is really, really frustrating sometimes and although you can scroll pretty quickly, I find that the menus are still pretty complicated compared to something like my Blackmagic camera or obviously an iPhone but in the end, all camera settings are like this so you just gotta get used to it, I guess. Another thing that I find a little bit annoying is that in the video mode, you don't have the option for six different presets unlike you do in the camera mode. I wish I could set six different customizable settings I can easily switch through when shooting with video because when you do switch through them, it doesn't necessarily actually change anything in the video. There are a few things that you can customize in the video settings and put in your own kind of um, recipe, I guess but you can't switch between them and change all the settings at once. You have to go through and manually adjust them. Now, obviously this is a photography camera, so this may not really apply to you out there. And that's about it. There's all the things I love about the Fujifilm X100V as well as the things I don't like. Now, of course, go and check out Fujifilm X Weekly. I'll leave the link in the description below. It's one of the big benefits of the camera. You can have um, an amazing community of people and find all these different recipes on there as well. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please do feel free to leave a comment down below. Have an amazing day. My name is Kirk. 
stay safe, and of course, do take care.